lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you today? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. I don't have any ideas for some lively banter to start things <laughs> off. Um, how about you? <laughs> no, no, nothing really. We can just jump right on in if you want to. Well, there, where's the fun in that? Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> trying to finish off my Knob Creek 12 here. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. It's good. I I, I enjoy this one. Yeah. It's uh, it's at the edge of your proof range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's right there at the cliff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. I, uh, I like a little higher proof stuff, but yeah. but no, this is tasty. Yeah, it's good. Um, I dig it. It's an allocated product here. Yeah. I think it's an allocated product anywhere, but that means that you can't find it here. Yeah. And right. I did not, I, I was not selected for uh, a, a ticket or, you know, a, a particular spot in line for the upcoming ABC quarterly release, which is... Oh, really? Ah, <sighs> disappointing. Well, maybe next time. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember what it is. Actually, I think I may have missed it. So it was probably last weekend. Oh, so it's already happened? Yeah, I think so. I have no clue. I, I don't either. When, when I got the notice that I hadn't won, I was like, well, I'm not going to go stand in line for two hours to maybe not... in 45 minutes away for two hours to maybe <laughs> right. not get anything. <laughs> Yeah. So um, I I just ignored it after that. Nah, I, I got plenty that. of whiskey anyway. Yeah, it's not a shortage in there. No, I'm I'm kind of out of room. Yeah, I've got cabinets that don't quite close. You got to start drinking more. Yeah, that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> that's uh, my doctor agrees. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, uh, as long as we're talking about you know. Actually, I don't have doctors a good, agreeing. I don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't have a good transition. Um, but uh, so student loan repayments restart in October. Oh, really? So hey, that's a, something else to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that a lot of people are really looking forward to that. Um, so then, what happens? That so remember now that they haven't had to make loan payments in three years it's pandemic relief that is a long time i i mean i know that that's right but it just blows my mind that you know that's it's been three years <laughs> yeah um we have an interesting clip of people talking about it i guess we're going right in i, I was hoping to do a little more introduction before the clip but the clip does such a good job of explaining what's going on <laughs> all right that we may as well just play the clip let's do it all right it is officially time for a student loan repayment boycott. Some taking to social media, calling on borrowers not to pay. Does the U.S. government just think we're going to go back to paying student loan payments? Like what? It's going to ruin my credit score. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona says it's a risk people shouldn't take. The loans are still there and the repayment is still needed. Failing to pay comes with serious consequences. Those in default face wage garnishing and big credit score hits. But for now, the government says borrowers won't face those penalties if they miss payments. We know many of our borrowers are going to struggle to make payments, but we want to make sure that we're not sending their name to credit agencies. So we're going to hold them harmless for a year as they're getting back up. Among longer term options for relief, see if your employer offers repayment assistance programs and consider the SAVE program, which adjusts monthly bills based on borrower's income. So I think Homeboy at the beginning gets it right. Yeah. Like, we're not just going to go back to paying these. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, what's what's funny is that I'm actually on board with that. Yeah. Like, hey, don't pay the government back. Yeah. To hell with them. Right. Um, I, I've... The problem with that is is the government has a million ways to get at you for doing exactly that. Yeah. Just wait until there's a central bank digital currency that you have to use. Yeah. I mean, we're, <laughs> I tell you though, I mean, and that's kind of like, but to me, that's just like the last leg to drop. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we're already there. Like, I mean, they can, they can garnish your wages. Like they can pull money out of your account. Like there's like, they, they can get that money if they want it. Like yeah. they can take your house. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wasn't, I, could swear that I read that they will continue to not charge interest uh, for this year. Remember, he said they'll be held harmless for a year. Yeah. Um. But I couldn't find I couldn't find that again. Really? So I don't know if there's no interest for another year still, or if they're just not going to turn people over to credit agencies. Yeah. For not paying. Yeah. Um. Now, I, my concern though is that this 
this mentality um, gets applied to private loans yeah. as well. People are like, eh, why should I keep making my car payment or my house payment or whatever? What are they going to do? They're going to hurt my credit. And, and and there are some states where it's almost impossible to get somebody out of a house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when it comes to a house, that's absolutely true. I don't know. I watched a lot of towing shows for a while. So if you don't want to pay your car, note, there's some guys that, that will be more than happy to relieve you of your vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I understand that, but uh, I, but I think, the housing thing is a little different because mm-hmm. because you're right. Like, I don't know specifically which states, but I've always heard horror stories of like renters that just decide they're not going to pay anymore, and it takes a year or more mm-hmm. before you can evict them. Yeah, you know, and by then they've done destroyed the house because yeah, because it's not really theirs anymore. They don't. Well, care. it's not theirs, and then there's yeah, you can, you're trying to make them leave anyway, and they don't want to. So yeah. it's not like they're going to respect I mean, the property. <laughs> in this case, we are talking about mortgages, not rents, but still though. Yeah. I mean. I've I've shopped foreclosures before though. I think you this did. House this this house was a foreclosure, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know where I'm getting at. Like, I yeah. mean, I didn't look at the foreclosure that looked like it had been well maintained and taken care of. Yeah, no, <laughs> this this place was a wreck when yeah. I got in. Um, I mean, every everyone we looked at was going to take at least twenty grand to get it back. Yeah, I sp- we're up to snuff. I spent just over twenty grand. Um, repairing this place. Absolutely. Uh, I had to pull out all the floors, um, repaint all the walls, kills and everything. Like it was, walked in the door and it smelled so bad. Had to open all the windows and doors for like three days. I mean, it wasn't quite that bad, but it it was, but it was bad. Like it hit you like a wall. Yeah, Um, absolutely. And uh, so, yeah, when, when people, when people don't think of something as theirs anymore, they're less concerned about it. Most people. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I had a I had a good friend back in Atlanta who who treated other people's stuff way better than he treated his own. But that was a yeah. that was an exception. That's like an they, outlier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, mean, and I do that too. I'm the actually. same way. Yeah, actually, I do like, that too. But. Um, yeah. You let me borrow your car. I'm going to put gas in it and clean it. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know. You want to borrow my car? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, so, um, man, there was some other aspect of this that I really wanted to focus on. That, and now I'm trying to think of what it was. Yeah. Oh, this is this is kind of the I don't know. Irony isn't quite the right word, but um, of this is that actually, with all the inflation and so forth, man, these loans are a lot less than they used to be. Yeah. Um, the 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 loan value, like the actual value, like the dollar value is the same, but the value of that money is much lower. Yeah. So, so actually people don't owe as much in real terms as they did before the pandemic. Yeah. The only sad thing about that is wages haven't really kept up with that. No. Um, I, I do think over the next year or two that may improve some. It, it'll never quite catch up. But it'll never, inflation. well, it'll never catch up, but yeah. um, I, I do hope it gets at least better. <laughs> Yeah, I hope so too. I, for personal for note. me personally, <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, and then uh, he was talking about the save repayment plan. Yeah. So those of you out there with student loans that are looking at this and and are concerned, um, look into the save repayment plan. I, it's it's a government thing, so it's like super convoluted. Yeah. Uh, but roughly, what it does is it changes your monthly payments. Um, on your loan to um, like based, based your on your income, income? Yeah. and then it like throws away the rest. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so, that's interesting. Yeah. So essentially if your monthly loan repayment that it's currently asking for is $20 and through this calculation, it determines that $10 is what, what you, you can, should pay. Yeah. Then you pay the $10 and then the other $10 just goes away. Nice. As far as I could tell, like yeah. I may have been misreading that because it doesn't make I mean, any sense, but that's like totally a government thing. To it's, do. I was going to say it's government money. So like, who knows? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other thing, like part of the reason that I think that this, this isn't a bad move for people to just not pay. Yeah. Like I, why I like that idea yeah. is that people are always going on complaining about, you know, private banks and so forth with predatory loans. Yeah. Private banks don't have predatory loans. Yeah. I mean, not unless they're selling that loan off to a government later. Yeah. Um, but realistically speaking, uh, private banks don't do predatory loans because they lose if they don't get the money back. 
Yeah. They're not going to make a loan that they don't think that they can get repayment on. No. Um, and that's why they charge really high interest rates on riskier stuff because they want to get as much money up front out of it as they can just in case. Well, but they're not making these loans with the intention of it not being paid back. Yeah. And I think that's where people kind of get it twisted is they're like, well, it's predatory because the interest rate is so high. Yeah. Well, the interest rate is so high because of your credit. Yeah. And if you could get a better interest rate, you wouldn't be accepting that loan in the first place. Exactly. All right. So... Um, but the the government, they're not constrained by profit and loss. Yeah. Like, if they don't get their money back, they just take it out of the rest of us. Exactly. And truthfully, they take it out of you, too. Yeah. So if you don't pay this loan back, you're yeah. going to be paying it one way or another. Yeah, we're all going to be paying it one way or another. Yeah. I mean, inflation. they're still going to get money out of you. Yeah. So, um, so in a sense, I well, kind of feel like... The, I think kind of what this guy may have been getting at, and maybe not, maybe I'm reading too much into it, is that if, because he talked about going to social media about this, um, which is the reason I think that this may be what he was getting at, that is if everybody just refuses to pay these things back, mm -hmm. that the government will be forced will be forced into a situation where they have to make other arrangements. Okay, let's do that with taxes. Everybody. Yeah, hey, yeah, right. Everybody just don't pay your taxes. Yeah. Everybody don't pay your Everybody taxes. Everybody don't pay your taxes. Yeah. What are they going to do? Yeah. They're going to have a hard time funding war, I'll tell you that. Yeah, right. Actually, the truth is because of the way the monetary system works. They'll just start printing money. It. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have to tax us anymore. Yeah. They can just print money to cover everything and let inflation tax us in its own way. Yeah. And that's that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. Um so. Well, and, and that's why this isn't as much of a danger to the government and why they can make loans to people who will never be able to repay it. Yeah, yeah. They're not worried about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it does still, you know, if you're already, if you took a loan to get a degree in something that can't earn you enough money to pay back that loan, and then the government ruins your credit as well because you can't pay back that loan, like you have really handicapped yourself. Yeah, you're in trouble. Like that, that's hard to come back from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, a real business that has to worry about the profit and loss, yeah. loss specifically, yeah. um, they're not going to make a loan to a person that's not getting a degree that at least has the appearance of being able to earn enough to pay back that loan. Absolutely. Government couldn't care less. Yeah. So. It's just not a concern. Um, not everybody needs to go to college. Yeah. In right. fact, I would say most people don't need to go to college yeah. unless you're going to do something that needs some like real specialized information. Yeah. Um, real specialized training. Uh, I'm talking about um, doctors. I hate to say lawyers, but lawyers uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely take specialized training, yeah. um, engineering, things yeah. like this. Yeah. You probably don't need to go to college. Yeah. And trade schools are great. Yeah. Find something that you want to do an apprentice. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Well, Absolutely. You can probably earn more money, actually. Yeah. Like, I have a degree in anthropology. Yeah. How much does that make you over the years? It uh, it does not relate to my job at all. I imagine not. <laughs> I mean, luckily, I have other skills. Yeah. It wasn't my degree that I was selling. The only thing I was selling with my degree was that I was able to complete something. Yeah. 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 You did school. <laughs> yeah. You did more school. <laughs> yeah. I, I followed the path yeah. that I was supposed to. Yeah. If I had it to do again, though... I might not go to college at all. Yeah. You've spent a lot of time in college. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes and no. I, I spent a lot of years in college. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, part of that was part time. There was some time off. I mean, like it took me yeah. eight years to get a degree, but I wasn't in school all that time and I wasn't full time all that time. Yeah. Um, and I, when I went back to school, I practically started over. Yeah. So. And uh, and then I, I did do a year of a, uh, a master's program that I dropped out of because I didn't see the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't think that I've needed it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that I'm, you know, it was it was business. I'm in business. I do finance stuff. I didn't have right. to get that degree to do these things. I just have to be able to use a calculator and accounting software. Yeah. And it's not that hard. Exactly. You would. Yeah. I'm good at this stuff. I can, I can do it without the calculator most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I double check myself though. Cause you, you don't want to get because money wrong. <laughs> because you're OCD. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I, uh, I think that the, 
the real problem here is that the government's giving out loans to people that don't have any real direction and they're not they're not going to do something with that money that will warrant getting a loan for that money and the government can do that because they'll take the money out of you one way or another yeah. whereas a bank couldn't and that makes the bank the bad guy but not really like yeah. i mean if you think about it if you back off and take the big picture view you see that actually the the government's the bad guy here yeah. the government's the one that's actually issuing predatory loans yeah. loans to people who will never be able to pay it back and then ruin in their credit for it yeah banks don't want to do that yeah no, um, they want their money back they want their money back <laughs> yeah uh so um i guess it's uh, i swear there was something else that i really wanted to, yeah. to make a, a point about on this but I, I can't remember what it is so yeah. oh well I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll remember it later in the podcast, and we'll, it'll be a strange little <laughs> yeah. aside. Yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah. You have to stick around to the end. To find <laughs> <out>. <laughs> nice. <laughs> stick around to the end, and there's there's nothing. <laughs> um. So, uh, what do you want to what do you want to hit next? I don't know. Where do you want to go? Well, I, I, so I say we talk about either immigration or Assange. Um. Let's do Assange because I feel like it'll be shorter than immigration. That's probably true. Okay. Uh, so Assange, um, the Australian government is actually finally uh, putting some real pressure. Well, as much as they're able to put pressure on the U.S. Um, <laughs> Can't to, pressure us. <laughs> yeah, We're the big dog. <laughs> exactly. Um, but they are trying to uh, stand firm, I think, is what the their prime minister said. Um, yeah. Stand firm uh, a against the U.S. government to pressure the U.S. government to drop charges finally against Julian Assange. Yeah. Now, Julian Assange has essentially been imprisoned for like, I don't remember now, 12, 15 years, somewhere in there. God, yeah, it's been that long, um, I think. Something he, like that. Yeah, he was, let's see, I want to say it, this all started in 2008, right? Isn't that, that when the feels, Warlocks came that out? feels right, but... That's a, that's a long time ago. I could have that year wrong. I probably should have double checked it. But yeah. anyway, um, when this started with the release of the Afghan and um, Iraq warlocks, yeah, uh, that Chelsea Manning at the time, Bradley Manning, leaked to Julian Assange, and Julian Assange published on WikiLeaks, and then um, he holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy for a long time. Yeah. Um, until the British government finally arrested him on rape charges that turned out to be uh, fabrications. Um, a lot of that going around. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing we could talk about. <laughs> anyway, uh, that turned out to be fabrications. Um, but they were they used as as an excuse to go in and pull him out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London, yeah. and he's been in Belmarsh prison since then, which is like four years. <laughs> Now, they, those uh, rape charges were dropped because they were fabrications. Yeah. Um, but he remains in prison uh, because the U.S. is trying to extradite him. And for whatever reason, the British government is able to hold him with no charges pending an extradition decision, even though they have already uh, denied the extradition and now it's on appeal. Yeah. So having denied the extradition and the U.S. <laughs> government appealed the denial... Yeah. They keep Assange in prison with no charges. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I would like to think that that wouldn't happen here, but the truth is, it is does. It, it, it would, yeah, yeah, and does. I'm sure. So yeah, I mean, there's still guys in Guantanamo that have never been charged with a crime that have been there for more yeah. than a decade. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And the interesting thing is they originally denied the extradition to the U.S. because they thought it was dangerous to Though send him the, to the U.S. that he wouldn't survive. Yeah, yeah, because our prison system is so horrible, which it yeah. is, like, <laughs> yeah. by the way. like Yeah, they're keeping him in a dungeon, but somehow the U.S. <laughs> prison system is worse. And I don't think they're wrong. I don't think they're wrong either. <laughs> I was going to say, I think they're correct about that. Yeah. yeah. So... um Anyway, to, to back up a little bit for those that are unfamiliar with this or have only taken in the propaganda um, that the, the U.S. media and government have pushed about Assange, really he is in prison for um, publishing information that was leaked to him that implicates the U.S. government in war crimes. 
Yeah. And more, actually. So U.S. war crimes with the war logs, yeah. uh, spying on U.S. allies with Cablegate. Um, and I think the, the really big one, I think the one that's really had the, the most impact on his life hmm. um, in terms of shortening it, I think, yeah. uh, is that, uh, that the U.S. intel services have tools to hack almost anything and leave evidence that somebody else did it. Did it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was the Vault 7 um, leaks. Yeah. But most of this seems to be focused on the war log stuff um, that that implicates the U.S. Uh, military in war crimes in Afghanistan and Iraq. Yeah. And uh, so really he's being held or they're, they're trying to prosecute him for being a journalist. He didn't steal any information. It was leaked to him. Um, and all he did was publish it, which is the same thing that journalists do all over the place. Oh yeah. Now they uh, are trying to say that he, that he helped, um, Manning, uh, hack into the systems. systems. Yeah. But that's, that's hyperbole. Um, he wasn't trying to get Manning to get access to information that Manning didn't already have access to. Yeah. Uh, now he was encouraging Manning to give him more information, but that's what journalists do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want as much as they can get. Exactly. Um, but what the, the computer stuff, what they were actually doing is that he was, he was trying to help Manning find a way to mask his, um, involvement. Identity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah his, mask his identity in the system. Yeah. Um, but he was only accessing information that he already had access to. Yeah. I don't know if, when I'm talking about Manning in the past tense, do I say he or she, I'm actually a little confused about this. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> he was a heathen. He was a heathen. So he's a heathen. <laughs> um, well, that too, but <laughs> so anyway, um, he, he, they weren't actually hacking any information they were just trying to fa find a way to mask manning's identity while he was accessing information that he already had access to yeah yeah um and uh yeah it's nice to see the australian government actually trying to do something about this This started a few months ago and i may have mentioned it on the podcast in passing but it it hasn't gone away and yeah. that's encouraging to me yeah uh so there last week last wednesday the 20th um of october there were uh several um MPs, uh, members of parliament from Australia that were in DC meeting with us officials to talk about getting Manning's charges dropped or not Manning's, sorry, Assange's charges dropped. Yeah. Um, they have a letter signed by something like 60 MPs across the parties, yeah. uh, in Australia, um, urging the U S government to drop these charges. And the, uh, now of course, uh, Anthony Blinken, our secretary of state, uh, rejected, this out of hand a few months ago and again more recently. Um, but the Australian prime minister who will be in DC at the end of October, at the end of this month, um, he, well, it's not quite this month, is it? All right. In about a month, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, prime minister will be here and he said, we're not letting this go. Yeah. So we might actually see Assange get freed and he should be. Absolutely. Um, it, it makes, it, it's hard for the U S to complain about Russian, uh, you know, Russia imprisoning uh, journalists and still be pursuing Julian Assange. Yeah. Like at least, you know, at least walk the walk. Don't be a hypocrite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we are certainly that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so immigration. All right. Oh, you're excited. Yeah. Let's start us off then. <laughs> um, I don't know where where did where did you want to start on this? I don't. We were talking about this we can the start other wherever. night. But. Uh, well, the the main thing that came up when we were talking about this the other night, like I think we started with the they were saying that um there was a huge well, it was because New York was making special dispensation for Venezuelan immigrants. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. And uh, so the the state of New York is trying to um 
to expedite, I guess, work permits for particularly Venezuelans. Yeah. Or maybe it's for everybody, but Venezuelans is just a huge portion of I think, them. I think that was the case that they were trying because because the story is is New York is flooded with immigrants right now. Yeah. Um, well, compared to New York. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a problem for them. Um, yeah, I think Abbott was actually just up there saying, uh, you've got, what, 120,000 immigrants up here that have come in in the last year? Yeah. We get that in a month. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, uh, but it's it's a, like, like he was pitching a fit about it. What was it? He, he said something that, like New York wasn't going to recover from this or there was like... It, oh, are you talking about the mayor of New York? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he was saying he didn't see a... Oh, we're into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that it was going to bankrupt them, that they couldn't afford it, and you know, so yeah. there were there was a he, he was doing a lot of complaining. Yeah, which um, is is wild to me because I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but New York is a sanctuary city. They are, yeah, right. And and a bunch of these uh, more liberal cities took mm-hmm. the stance quite a few years ago where they were like, well, we're just going to be a sanctuary city, so if you come here, you're fine. Yeah. Um, and they're kind of getting like the repercussions from that now. Mm-hmm. As it were. Yeah. Well, so. uh, Chicago is running into problems with it, too. And, and one of their um, city council or aldermen or something has introduced whatever they call it, yeah. uh, some kind of legislation to open it up to a vote to the city of Chicago, whether they want to remain a sanctuary city. Yeah. Because so. um, they just kind of forced it upon the people. And they're like, all right, well, we're having some real problems. Are you guys still on board with this? Were yeah. you ever? <laughs> yeah, probably not. Like, um, it's probably the reality. So, uh, yeah, that's that's where we got started on it. And then um, we just started talking about like some of the causes of uh, these immigration crises. And and I, you know, so blame America first. Yeah. What I what I pointed out was that our foreign policy is has played a big part in immigration crises, not just here, but in Europe as well. Oh, absolutely. And the Venezuela thing is a perfect example. Now, Venezuela has gone a long way on their own to destroying their country. Oh, yeah. Um, but the U.S. has contributed significantly as, as well. You know, even beyond backing an alternative government, like a parallel government <laughs> yeah, right. in Venezuela for maybe still. I don't... I, I think we've kind of dropped it, but I don't know that the U S government has actually ever recognized again, the Maduro government as the legitimate government of Venezuela, probably still, you know, supporting Guaido. Yeah. Right. Uh, and if <laughs> is you he wanted, still in an office somewhere, uh, like uh, <laughs> pretending to be the president <laughs> could of be. Venezuela? <laughs> Definitely could be. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and if you guys want to learn more about that and you weren't, you haven't been with us this whole time, go back to some of the early episodes of this podcast. Cuckoo like, Caracas. Yeah, Caraca. that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, I, I remember that one specifically. Like, <laughs> yeah. we did a deep dive um, into this. We spent a lot of time talking about what was going on in Venezuela because that was all active when this podcast began. Yeah. And uh, so, well, like I said, well, just the, you know, the socialist government has done plenty to destroy that country, um, the U S has hastened the fall. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so that's why people are fleeing out of Venezuela. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and then of course in Europe, well, okay. So, but the other things that you're finding is when they're talking about, uh, people from all over the place crossing the border, um, the Southern border into the U S you're talking about people in, uh, North and, and, um, like across North Africa and, and West Africa where the U S is involved in, Various military actions. Yeah, across the Sahel with uh, with France, not so much anymore. Yeah. France is kind of out, <laughs> but um, and uh, Ethiopia and Sudan and Somalia, all these places where the U.S. is actively involved. Uh, Venezuela, um, you're talking about uh, Syrians and Yemeni and and people from the Middle East where the U.S. is active militarily. Um, not to mention, uh, the, like, and those groups are really bad, um, in terms of the immigration crises in Europe. Yeah. Uh, especially since we took down Gaddafi, who always claimed that he was like the cap on, um, on refugees into Italy through North Africa. And since he fell, 
It's just like a floodgate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's nobody to control it anymore. Like, like he was, he was at least a strong dictator Yeah, that kept control of things. And uh, of course, um, Erdogan uh, from Turkey has made the same kind of threats. Yeah. He's like, look, you have no idea how bad it could be if I just open the doors. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I'm keeping these people out of your out of your countries. So yeah. You know, and and he's used this to good effect, actually. Yeah. Um, well, because I'm sure they know he's right. Yeah, they yeah. recognize it now. Yeah. But he can't stop it all. So, um, you know, a lot of these Middle Eastern immigrants are coming in through Europe, and then now, of course, you don't know, talk about it as much because we have an agenda to push. Not we, but you yeah. know, <laughs> media has an agenda to push. But Ukrainian immigrants flooding across Europe as well. Oh yeah, um, are putting a strain on the system. Yeah, and uh, but, it's really you know, surprising that the that Europe hasn't really made a turn against the West over just this, mm-hmm. because so much of this is due to just us, you know, over there interfering in the Middle East. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the the warfare state has created. Um, millions and millions of refugees yeah. uh, over the years. Yeah. Uh, um, and well, not just the warfare state, just the American foreign policy generally, because we're, we're not fighting any wars in South America and Central America. Yeah. But, uh, you know, backing coups in Venezuela and um, Honduras uh, and elsewhere, um, you know, not to mention the uh, the drug war in Colombia. I, I guess you can count yeah. that as a war. Yeah, there um, you go. You know, those, those uh, activities have created a tremendous number of, of uh, refugees and immigrants as well. Yeah. So. And, uh, and I actually, I, I wrote like 80% of an article years and years ago about exactly that. Like, at what point is, is Europe going to say, okay, like, we've had enough of this. Like, you're, <laughs> you're really causing problems for us and stand up to the U.S., um, military state yeah, and say, yeah. no, we, we don't want you going into this next country as well. Cause we're already dealing with, you know, tens of thousands of immigrants from the last country you invaded. Exactly. And yeah, we don't there, want any more. There has to be a tipping point at, at, at somewhere, but mm-hmm. we haven't got there yet, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then of course the other thing that I was talking about is that one of the, you know, the big concerns with, with all of these people moving around is human trafficking. Yeah, and uh, I know you and I disagree on on appropriate border policy, but um, human trafficking is a problem that is created by a strict border security. Not if you build a wall. Well, no, that actually makes it that much worse. <laughs> oh, you think so? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because then you have to um, you know pay into these organized groups to get past the obstacles, yeah. and that's exactly what. That's what human trafficking is about. If you yeah. can come to the border, I mean, think of the Ellis Island days. Yeah. When you come across in a ship, you signed your name, um, and y- you walked off. Like there weren't, it wasn't human trafficking so much then. Yeah, you know, there were still, there were still things that went badly. Like uh, in order to pay your way across the ocean, your, you know, indentured servant for however long, or things like that. I mean, I'm yeah. not saying that it eliminates the problem, yeah. but it intensifies the problem. Yeah. Um, it makes human trafficking, uh, first off, um, more, um, more valuable. Yeah. Um, there's a better word for that, but I, you know, brain sieve (laughs) and, uh, and it, and it makes them more indispensable as well to help navigate whatever obstacles exist. Yeah. Wow. If you can't just show up at the border, if you can't walk yourself there and and fill out the paperwork on your own and sign your way across the border, like if that's a really difficult thing to do, the more obstacles you put in the way, the more um, incentive there is for uh, for people who for organized crime to take up yeah. that cause and put, let you go through their tunnel on there or something. Yeah, yeah, or pay off the right pay them and they pay off the right people or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, speaking of, uh, so my friend that I always use is the example of bad immigration policy in the U S yeah. um, who had married a, a Brazilian girl and, um, had a daughter with her. And then when he was moving back to the U S uh, after he had to flee Honduras <laughs> where he was living at the time because of the coup that yeah. the U S sponsored, <laughs> uh, 
this is just like a great example of both bad foreign <laughs> policy and bad immigration policy. Yeah. And uh, so I've always said, you know, it took him six months to get his wife into the country. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to him recently and he was like six months. I wish. Yeah. yeah. He said it was more like 18. Oh, wow. And he said, you know, if I was a, if I was a Europe, uh, if I held a European passport, yeah. if I was a European citizen to almost any country in Europe, yeah. um, that if my wife, I could get married, and if I have a legal marriage, I could get her in the next day. Wow. He said, but the U.S. took me a year and a half to really? get my wife into the country. Wow. So there's some problems there. Yeah. Um, you had much more to say. I, yeah, um, I just don't have, <laughs> a, other night. I don't have a whole lot on this right now. I don't know. Well... But. That's too bad. It was such a good discussion the other night. <laughs> yeah. You're disappointing me. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> At every turn, right? <laughs> um, well, you know, we're getting... It, it's not getting long, but with the clips, we're, we've got maybe 10 minutes left. Yeah. And so that gives us time to... Um, for theater of the absurd. <laughs> All right. I, I suppose, uh, with the Canada... Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the Canadian Parliament... Um, Honoring the Nazi soldier. <laughs> and oh, you can't, you can't make just, it up, man. No, I know. It's, it, it sounds like a joke, right? But we'll just, let's just play the introduction to the Speaker of the yeah. Parliament, I guess, or one of the houses. I don't understand how their system works. I don't know there. their system, yeah. Um, but anyway, here's his introduction to this, this old man. All right, let's hear it. We have here in the chamber today Ukrainian Canadians, Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today, even at his age of 98. He's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we thank him for all his service. Thank you. Okay, Liberty Larry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whose side were the Russians on in World War II? <laughs> well, I had to go back and check, but it turns out they were on our side. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, this guy should have gone back and checked too. <laughs> Apparently. Oh. I, um, th that is a house full of people, supposed to be professionals, this is representatives in government. It doesn't sound like any of them like thought for a second. Wait a minute. He yeah. was fighting the Russians? That puts him where? <laughs> exactly? Yeah. So like, on for what of side you, of this yeah. war was he on? <laughs> if any of you, I, like, I really pray that our audience <laughs> knows, understands why this is so yes. ridiculous. But just in case. Yeah. Um, first off, I, I'm... Frustrated about this constantly conflating Russia and the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah. So first off, Russia was part of the Soviet Union during World War II. Because the Soviet Union was the nation. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, the USSR. And the uh, and in fact, the Russians overthrew the Soviet Union yeah. in a bloodless coup. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so they the, should be the heroes. The the Soviet Red Commies is not the nation that we're talking about. So I'm I'm like really frustrated that <laughs> every time yeah. they talk about this, to that they make it seem like it's the same group of people. Well, and I I heard this years ago, but like they did some kind of poll about the KGB mm -hmm. that pe like people were at, asking people about the KGB. Like most people think that's still a thing. Yeah, that the KGB is still just like out there, like doing stuff in Russia. <laughs> yeah, it's the FSB now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but still, though, like uh, the it's just mm -hmm. goes to the point, you know. That, yeah. So uh, the Soviet Union um, was an ally in World War II, yeah. which means that this Ukrainian man fighting against the Soviet Union in Ukraine in World War II was fighting for the Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> for the Nazis. Yeah. And, and in fact, he was part of an SS unit. Um, in Ukraine, yeah, and uh, and it's the it's the descendants of these SS guys, um, the Ukrainian SS that we're talking about all the time that are 
They may not be a large part of the population in Ukraine, but they are overrepresented in terms of policy and national politics. Yeah. So when we're talking about, you know, the Ukrainian Nazis that like there, there's an oversized influence by this guy's descendants. Yeah. And, and while the, um, Stepan Bandera is like the kind of the, the, at least, you know, spiritual leader of this Ukrainian Nazi movement back in the day. Um, and while they may have separated themselves from the, the actual Nazis, the German Nazis, like yeah. ideologically, it's still the same. They're the same folks. Yeah. Yeah. And they're still there and they have an outsized influence on the politics of Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and it became even stronger after the 2014, uh, coup Maidan coup yeah um but it just amazes me that this room full of they gave him two standing ovations they thanked him for his service <laughs> yes they did can you imagine being him like what's this guy i know he's like 98 years old or whatever yeah, he looked but, like he was barely there he's yeah like, but can you imagine what was go what would be going through his head it's like these guys yeah. don't even know oh man and uh, yeah i know <laughs> or it, maybe they do <laughs> it it reflects a real ignorance of history yeah. that's just hard to fathom it really from my perspective. Is. And uh and Zelensky gave him the fist pump. <laughs> yeah. Great pictures of Zelensky oh, like pumping his fist at this. Oh, and man. and you know Nobody. Zelensky's supposed to be a Jew. Like that this guy's <laughs> this guy was probably rounding up Zelensky's forebears. Yeah, right. At some point. Anyway, it, it just, it amazes me that there's such an ignorance of history here, and this is supposed to be an educated group of people. Well, you would think, even if everything, if he had slipped through in every way, when he, ma when he made that announcement, mm -hmm. like, the people in the crowd should have been taken back. Yeah. Like, you would think, like, you would think that the people in the crowd would be like, wait, what? And, like, there'd be, like, this realization happening uh -huh. in real time. Mm -hmm. But that ain't what happened. Yeah, I mean, there's. Uh, go look at views of the room. I mean, I, I mean, I haven't looked really closely, yeah. but it doesn't seem to me that there's anybody there that's like that's like looking around them it's with like, a confused like, look. Like, 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 wait, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did he just say? Yeah, he said he was fighting against the Russians in World War II. Doesn't that put him on the wrong side? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And yeah. yeah, and so and then of course the the other part of that that I. I really wanted to point out was this conflation of Russia and the Soviet Union. Yeah. Um, this is just, I don't know if this is again, another part of that, just, uh, just ignorance of history. Like that people don't realize that the Soviet Union died 30 years ago. Yeah. I mean, I think there's some of that for sure, but I think it's more about the propaganda that it's, yeah. it's best to get people associating today's Russia with the former Soviet Union. Yeah. Um, because there's still a lot of people in this country, like probably just about anybody older than me, because I definitely remember the Cold War. Like yeah. I remember being raised to like, you know, dislike those red commies yeah. at the, in the Soviet Union. A lot, a lot um, of Cold Warriors out there. Yeah. So th that, I think that mentality is hard to break. Yeah. And so it's, it's, uh, it's very powerful for us media, especially when we're, we're making Russia into um, an enemy uh, to make that association between Russia and the Soviet Union. But the the point that I made a minute ago, and I want to reiterate here, is that Russians are the people that overthrew that Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah. like these are the people that that tore down the Soviet Union and replaced it with a democratic capitalist country. Yeah. And it may be corrupt, but our country's corrupt too. And yeah. so is Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So all of these places are corrupt, but the, it's certainly an improvement from where they were under the Soviet Union. Though. Yeah. Russia is not a socialist country. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a socialist country. It's a it's a democratic capitalist country. Yeah. <laughs> and you may have questions about whether their elections are real or not, but there's there's a good reason that Putin is popular there that yeah. he keeps winning elections. Yeah. Um is that he he like saved a a, a really a foundering nation when he took control in the mid 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Late 90s. I think it was the late 90s. Yeah. But I could be wrong too. I, I no, I think you're right. Yeah. I think it was like 98 or something like yeah. that. But um anyway, when he took control like he may have been you know, getting everybody to play by his rules, 
but it restricted the but power least, of the oligarchs in a the, way that hadn't been done before. Yeah. Um, it, it really kind of reined in the power of the oligarchs and their ability to uh, accumulate wealth and oppress others. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like he, he may have created a new kind of corruption, but he limited the corruption that was there. Yeah. Yeah. And so. a bunch of the people that wouldn't get on board with him went to Ukraine, <laughs> which yeah. is why Ukraine and people forget this now because the media has just completely dropped it. But mm -hmm. Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries there is. Yeah. Like historically. Yeah. Like. Um, I think that there's actually in the, uh, in that same collection of, um, media clips um, from the No Agenda show. I think there's another clip that's, that talks about how um, Ukraine is the second most corrupt government in Europe next to Russia. Next to Russia. <laughs> well, there you go. So, and, you know... And, I, we're, and we're giving them just boatloads of money. Yeah. Just boatloads. But there's no evidence, they say that any of that money or weapons is being diverted somewhere other than where it's supposed to be. Of course. Why would you leave evidence? <laughs> That's a good response. <laughs> Just say it. Like. Um, so anyway, I, I just thought that this was funny. I like, I couldn't help but think like, uh, how is it that people aren't going? And the, the apologies were almost funnier. Yeah. Um, especially cause Trudeau standing right next to Zelensky while this is going on and he's like clapping with everybody else Yeah, and, uh, and they keep pressing him about it and he won't apologize. He's apologizing for everybody. He never apologizes for, <laughs> for himself. himself. Right. And in the first apology, he lays entirely all of the blame at the feet of the speaker <laughs> that introduced him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's recognized his mistake and he's apologized for it and it's entirely his fault and he said so <laughs> and like, oh my goodness, this guy. Oh, yeah. This guy. Trudeau. Yeah. I man. He's one of the worst, man. I like, have he really no is. respect for him at all. Yeah. And I don't understand how he got reelected. You got me. It's Canada. Cana it's Canadians, man. What do you expect? What are you guys doing up there? <laughs> Get it together. Yeah. Not that we have a lot. I mean, no, yeah, no, I, I agree. It's yeah. no, it's no better down here. Yeah. So <laughs> the last two elections were Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And then Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. And the yeah. next one's probably going to be Donald Trump versus Joe Biden again. Yeah. So, so it's not like we're putting up great candidates. <laughs> yeah. It's the truth. Oh man. All right. So on that at least somewhat comical note. Yeah. I'll I think we can that. close things out. We yeah. finally got in under an hour. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, I was looking forward to that. Unless you wanted to talk about the Russell Brand thing. I, you know, I just don't have a whole lot on it, really. I mean, we can talk about it, but... Um, I mean, it's... Other than it's just outrageous, man. Like, it... I, the, it's, it it's amazing to me that... And it shouldn't, but that this is the weapon that, that they use. Yeah. I think that's the point to make about this, is that it's not even to, like, completely dismiss the charges, but they are anonymous, right? They... Uh, well, as far as I know, they are. Yeah. As far as I know, they're anonymous charges. Um, and it's not like this is exactly new information because Russell Brand has been very open about his hedonism. His past life. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, he would call it his past life. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why now? Yeah. And it turns out like that the, uh, I can't remember what, um, media publication put the stuff out there in the first place, but they went like tracking people down and yeah. like talking, the, talked to them into giving up this information. Oh yeah. I mean, um, they, they sought this out. Like it, this, this is a coordinated hit, make no mistake. Yeah. And when you're a person, uh, and I think this is important to point out when you're, a, when you've been the person that Russell Brand has been when he was doing movies and when he was larger than life, like you're going to find, people who are upset about that, that, that had some kind of romantic engagement with him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, just didn't appreciate it. Like thought it was going to go somewhere else, that yeah. type of thing. You know, I mean, that this is, well, I as, mean, I, as I understand it, in all of the, the specific cases that they cited, these girls went back to him. Like they stayed with him or went back to him. It's not even like yeah. they were jilted lovers or whatever. Is that the yeah. right word? Sounded right. Yeah, sounds right. Um, I I but, think that the 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 point that you're making though is the right one. That it's not 
the reason that he's in trouble is because what he's saying now. Yes. Yeah. Um, that he's, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, Russell Brand politics that I don't agree with. Yeah. But he's out but, there speaking out against the power structure. He's against the grain. Yeah. Um, and um, he's and he's got a pretty big platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yes, he influences a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and he's against the wars, and he spoke out against COVID tyranny, and like he's he's ruffling feathers. Yeah. Um, yeah. In in high places. Yeah. And that that's really what this is about. And these media platforms or social media platforms that are demonetizing him or kicking him. Actually, they're not really kicking him off, right? They're just demonetizing. They're, my understanding was, yeah, demonetizing. Um, they're attacking his his way of making a living now. He yeah. probably doesn't really need it, but yeah. um, but this is like this is his job now. But that's yeah. But that's the game that they play. Like I mean, mm-hmm. uh, granted, he's probably in a position I would assume where like he's not dependent upon that money. Yeah. But if you were somebody that was and you had those same views, mm-hmm. like this is the weapon they use against you. Yeah. Well, and it's still going to have an impact on him. Even well, if yeah. He's, he's not going to starve without it, probably. But yeah. Um. But it closes a lot of doors Absolutely. too. Like it, it just. You know, it, it is an attack on his income, and it's um, it's a concern that these things, like, they're attacking him for things that didn't even happen on their platforms. Yeah. Like, there's all these weird policies that are being cited about how um, he has to conduct him, like, that they can punish him for conduct outside of the platform, which is incredible to me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and, like, while I can, I can respect that to a degree, yeah. you know, because you know, say YouTube, uh, you're a big personality on YouTube and you are, you commit some serious crime. I can see where YouTube would want to say, Hey, like we don't want you benefiting off of our platform. Yeah, We don't want like, that type of person. You, you know, here. you committed this act of terrorism that you were convicted for. And like, so we're not, you know, maybe yeah. we're not even going to kick you off. Like you, you'll have access to the platform as, as a user or even as a creator, but you're not making any money off of us. Yeah. Um, but he hadn't been convicted of anything. Hadn't even been these charged. Are just, yeah, this, these are just claims, and there's no yeah. charge. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think it's fair for him to be punished in that way. And the other part of that, I think the more important part, is that there's every reason to believe that there was pressure put from some government organization. And yeah. it's, a, it's again back to this question of, well, it's not really a question, um, is people's freedom of speech can be limited by a private company at the behest of a government. Yeah. And I don't think that it it should. No, absolutely not. Now, if private companies wants to say, hey, these are the kinds of, of uh, you know, opinions or views or whatever that we won't allow to be expressed on our platform, then they can do that. But we know that that's not, that's not what the private... The private companies aren't making these decisions on no, that. No, they're absolutely not because it's not in these companies' interest to do that. Yeah, because he, they want people on these platforms. Yeah, he's he has a huge number of followers. Yeah, yeah, it's it would hurt them for him to leave that platform. Yeah, you know, and it hurts them to not have advertising on his content. Absolutely. So, although uh, they probably still have advertising, he's just not getting a cut of it anymore. Probably, yeah. yeah. But, um. But I, I do find this interesting. I think that this is I, I think that this is really dangerous, um, and that we allow this kind of thing. And I, I, you know, I I get a kick out of Russell Brand. First off, like yeah. you know, full disclosure, yeah. I don't get a kick out of uh, Alex Jones. Yeah, no. But I, I still don't think that he should be censored in this well, way. I've always no matter how badly he treated his ex wives or whatever. I don't yeah. remember what he was. Well, and Al- people forget, but Alex Jones was like the first one. To, mm-hmm. and, and when it happened to him, it all happened at the same time. Like all yeah. the platforms got together and just completely um, took this guy off their things. And and there's no reason to believe that the government didn't have something, some kind of hand in that. Yeah, and it certainly seems that this attack on Russell Brand is coordinated. It's as the well. same way. This yeah. is this is the same same thing. And it'll be. I don't know, Tucker Carlson or somebody like that next. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they already took him off of his network yeah. TV. Now they'll try and attack him And he's him bigger now than he was then, uh, which is wild. I mean, I, I'll tell you this. Like, I have more people send me Tucker stuff since he's left Fox yeah. than when he was at Fox. Really? So, I mean, there's that. 
trying uh, to think if I think I watched his interview with Russell Brandt. Oh, did you? <laughs> I, th- I think that's the only thing that I've watched yeah. of his since yeah. he was off Fox News. It's not like I was watching him when he was on Fox News because I don't do the yeah, don't mainstream do. media thing. But well, I don't. I don't do Fox. So. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that that's kind of an interesting story, though. Definitely and uh, something and of to course, watch. he denies it through and through. Yeah. And the guy has been so open about his past exploits that I would be surprised if he was lying about yeah, this. Yeah, he, he has some form of credibility on that, mm-hmm. I would say. Yeah. So, so yeah. All right. Um, we might still be under an hour. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's see. What? Oh, uh, next Saturday, not tomorrow Saturday, but Saturday week, the yep. 7th, is the uh, Baldwin County... Alabama Libertarian Party Convention. Yes. At Beef O'Brady's in Spanish Fort. Yes. Um, yes. At noon. Yep. And I'm pretty sure all are welcome to attend. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely open. We encourage people to come out. Yeah. We encourage that behavior. Yes. <laughs> so if you want to, if, if you live in this area and you'd like to get involved with the Libertarian Party, definitely come to the convention. If you'd just like to meet some cool people and have a couple of drinks and some decent food, yeah, hey, you'll come get to, to the convention. You'll get to listen to Mike talk. He's going to do a little thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, I got a I got a little speechifying to do. Yep. Um, so I got to figure fun. out what that's going to be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> between now and then. I'm glad I asked uh, when it was before we got started here because I, I thought I had more than a week to come up with something, and I, now I feel pressed. <laughs> well, good. That, that's when you do your best work. Yeah, it's true. Speaking of my best work, I have not put anything up on Substack in a while, but I promise to change that. Yeah. Um, I, I had a little internal debate about a story, whether I wanted to publish it or not. And I think I will. I think you should. Um, I encourage that behavior too. And then there was, a, there was something else. Like I, I wrote down two sentences of what I thought was going to be my next article, and then I just haven't really looked at it since then. But I think... But I have something else in mind that I that I think is interesting, just about human nature. Oh, fun. Um, and, you know, optimism and pessimism and, and things like that. I just got to figure out how to weave all the parts together. Yeah. In a way that makes sense. It makes, makes sense in my head, but it, like getting that on paper it, it sometimes is difficult. It needs to difficult. make sense on paper too, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we would appreciate that. But uh, we expect to be back next week. It'll still be the, before the convention, so, yeah. um, so we won't one, have a recap one, or anything. One more reminder. Yeah. Um, but we expect to be back next week. And in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. Um, like and share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, you can always email me, michael at Um If you have comments, questions, uh, criticisms, whatever. Um, and then the sub stack is, uh, Michael's meditation, I think is how it's, Pronounced. it comes up. Yeah. It, it's called Michael's meditations. Yeah. But I don't think that's how the URL came out. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, if you search around, you can probably find it. <laughs> it's out there somewhere, I should, right? I should put a link on the libertymike.com website. Yeah. Uh, that you can just take straight to it. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd probably be smart. Um, And yeah, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.